So in our last video, we did a basic introduction to what we mean when we talk about verbal patterns in classical Syriac. And like I mentioned in the last video, the explanation that we gave for what we mean when we talk about verbal patterns was an overly simplified explanation, just so we could get the basic concept down. But in this video, we're going to be giving a much fuller explanation for how these verbal patterns actually work in classical Syriac. Now, in this video, we're only going to be looking at the pu'al, the pa'al, and the afel, and we'll leave the other verbal patterns for our next video. Now, if you want more information, you can check out my free online grammar of classical Syriac, which is available at www.marcfrancois.wordpress.com, and you'll especially want to check out chapter 8. So let's start off by taking a look at the most basic verbal pattern that we have in classical Syriac, which is the pu'al. Now the pu'al basically only has one main function. The pu'al is used to indicate either a simple action or a state of being in the active voice. And remember, the active voice is when the subject of the verb performs the action that's indicated by the verb. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. So the first example is the verb you have, which means he gave. And again, notice that that is a simple action in the active voice. The second example is the verb dechar, which means he remembered, a simple action in the active voice. The third example is the verb rechem, which means he loved, a simple action in the active voice. So again, the pu'al is the most basic verbal pattern that we have in classical Syriac. It indicates a simple action or state of being in the active voice. The second verbal pattern that we need to take a look at is the pa'al. Now, just like we saw in the last video, verbs in the pa'al are in the active voice. But the actual function that verbs have in the pa'al is a little bit more complicated than what we talked about in the last video. So let's take a look at the functions that verbs can have when they're placed in the pa'al. So first of all, verbs in the pa'al can sometimes function as an intensified version of the meaning that that same verbal root has in the pa'al. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. So the first example is the verb Nathaf, which means he drew out, and that's in the pu'al perfect. The second example is the verb natef, which means he dragged violently, and that's in the pa'al perfect. That's an intensified version of the meaning that that same root has in the pu'al. The second example is the verb chalat, which means he mixed, and that's in the pu'al perfect. And then we have the verb chalet which means he mixed thoroughly, and that's in the pa'el perfect. And the third example is the verb nefas, which means he shook, and that's in the pu'al perfect. And then we have napes, which means he shook violently, and that's again in the pa'el perfect. Second, verbs in the pa'el can sometimes be a causative version of the meaning that that verbal root has in the pu'al. And let's take a look at a couple of examples. The first example is the verb zavan, which means he bought, and that's in the pu'al perfect. And then we have the verb zaben, which means he sold. In other words, he caused to buy, and that's in the pa'al perfect. It's a causative version of the meaning that that same root has in the pu'al. The second example is the verb shalat which means he ruled, and that's in the pu'al perfect. And then we have the verb shalet, which means he put in authority. In other words, he caused to rule, and that's in the pa'al perfect. Third, verbs that are intransitive in the pu'al, in other words, verbs that don't take a direct object in the pu'al, can sometimes become transitive in the pa'al. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. The first example is the verb peshar, which means he melted, and that's in the pu'al perfect. And then we have the verb pashar, which means he melted something, and that's in the pa'al perfect. Second example is the verb shalem, which means he was finished, and that's in the pu'al perfect. And then we have the verb shalem, which means he finished something, and that's in the Pa'el perfect. Fourth, verbs that were originally derived from a noun, which are referred to as denominative verbs, are often placed in the pa'el. 
Let's take a look at a couple of examples. The first example is the noun techna, which means craft. And then we have a verb in the pa'el perfect, which is taken, which means he exercised a craft. The second example is the noun melitha, which means word. And then we have the verb malel, which means he spoke, and that's in the pa'el perfect. And the third example is the noun gushma, which means body. And then we have the verb gashem, which means he embodied, and that's in the pa'el perfect. Fifth, in some cases, the meaning of the verb in the pa'el is either completely unrelated or is only distantly related to its meaning in the pa'el. When this happens, the verb in the pa'el simply communicates a simple verbal idea. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. The first example is the verb kaval, which means he accused, and that's in the pa'el perfect. And then we have the verb kabel, which means he received, and that's in the pa'el perfect. We have the same verbal root, but the meanings are unrelated. The second example is the verb rechev, which means he rode, and that's in the pa'el perfect. And then we have the verb rakev, which means he constructed, and that's in the pa'el perfect. The same root, but the meanings appear to be unrelated. And then we have the verb brach, which means he bent the knee, and that's in the pu'al perfect. And then we have the verb barech, which means he blessed, and that's in the pa'el perfect. Again, that's the same root with two apparently unrelated meanings. Six, in some cases, a verbal root that is used in the pa'el either doesn't show up in the pu'al at all, or only rarely shows up in the pu'al. Now, when this happens, the verb in the pa'el communicates a simple verbal idea. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. And so, the first example is the verb shadar, which means he sent. There is no corresponding form in the pa'el perfect. The second example is the verb halech, which means he walked. And again, that is in the pa'el perfect. And the third example is the verb kadev, which means he lied or he spoke falsely. And again, that's in the pa'el perfect. Seventh, in some cases, the meaning of the verb in the pa'el is either identical or nearly identical to the meaning that that same verbal root has in the pa'el. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. The first example is the verb kanash, which means he gathered together, or he assembled, and that's in the pa'al perfect. And then we have the verb kanesh, which means he called together, he assembled, and that's in the pa'al perfect. And the meanings are basically identical. The second example is the verb peshar, which means he interpreted, and that's in the pa'al perfect. And then we have the verb Pashar, which means he interpreted. That's in the pa'el perfect, and the meanings are basically identical. And the third example is the verb kavash, which means he subdued, and again, that's in the pa'el perfect. And then we have the verb kabesh, which means he subdued, and that's in the pa'el perfect. So those are the different functions that verbs can have when they're placed in the pa'el. Now, because the pa'el has so many different functions, you can't always predict what a verb is going to mean when it's placed in the pa'el. And that means that for the most part, you simply have to memorize what verbs mean when they're placed in the pa'el. Now, these categories that we've just been taking a look at can sometimes help us memorize those meanings, but in the end, we basically still have to memorize what those verbal roots mean when they're placed in the pa'el. Now, the last verbal pattern that we need to take a look at is the afel. And just like we saw with the pu'al and the pa'el, verbs in the afel are also in the active voice. Now, in this case, the actual function that verbs have when they're placed in the afel is a lot more predictable than the function that verbs have in the pa'el. So that means that when you're memorizing verbs, you can focus on the exceptions rather than the rules when it comes to memorizing what verbal roots mean when they're placed in the afel. Let's take a look at the different functions that verbs have when they're placed in the afel. So first of all, 
Verbs in the AFL are normally the causative version of the same verbal root or the meaning of that same verbal root in the put out. So let's take a look at a few examples. The first example is the verb segev, which means he worshiped, and that's in the put out perfect. When placed in the AFL perfect, it is asgev, which means he caused to worship. The second example is the verb evav, which means he did, and that's in the put out perfect. When that verb is placed in the AFL perfect, it is abev, which means he caused to do. The third example is the verb emak, which means he became dark. We put that verb in the AFL perfect, it is amek, which means he made dark. And the fourth example is the verb kafar, which means he apostatized. When that verb is placed in the AFL perfect, it becomes akpar, which means he caused to apostatize. Second, verbs in the AFL can sometimes have the exact same meaning that that verb has in the put out. And let's take a look at one example. So for example, the verb shakal means he carried, and that's in the put out perfect. In the AFL perfect, it is ashkel, which means he carried. Third, in some cases, the meaning of a verb in the AFL is either completely unrelated or is only distantly related to its meaning in the put out. When this happens, the verb in the AFL simply communicates a simple verbal action or idea. Let's take a look at one example. The verb malach means he advised or he promised, and that's in the put out perfect. When that verb is placed in the AFL perfect, it becomes am lech, which means he ruled. We have the exact same verbal root, but the meanings are completely different. Fourth, in some cases, there is no discernible reason why a verb should be in the AFL as opposed to the put out. Let's just take a look at one example. The verb achrez means he proclaimed, and that's in the AFL perfect. There is no discernible reason why that verb should be in the AFL as opposed to the put out. So those are the functions that verbs can have in the put out the pa'al, and the afel. And in our next video, we'll take a look at the functions that verbs can have in the f pa'al, the f pa'al, and the et tafal. If you want more information, you can check out my free online grammar of classical Syriac, which is available at www.marcfrancois.wordpress.com. Thanks for watching.